This video is brought to you in part by Primo's Champion Hunting Calls and Accessories. Golden Eagle, the science of silence. Satellite, world's largest manufacturer of broadheads. Tasco, we bring the world closer. Fine Line, where uncompromising quality really means something. Featherflex, the ultimate decoy. Scott Archery, release aids that set the standard. Scat Insect Repellent. Tired of being bugged? Reach for Scat. Atsco Snow Seal, makers of UV Killer and other fine products. Remington, it's what you're shooting for. Mossy Oak, America's most effective concealment system. Today, turkey hunting is a different game. Patience is still one of a turkey hunter's best friends, but with more and more turkey hunters in the woods, turkeys are learning to adapt. Successful turkey hunters are turning to a more innovative style of turkey hunting. Each spring, we look forward to going to the woods with new ideas to play the game. Come join the Primo's crew for the Truth Five about spring turkey hunting. We call it tricking them. Welcome to Rattlesnake, Mississippi. I'm here with some of my favorite friends, Cuz, Ronnie Cuz Strickland. Hello, Wilbur. Mr. Mike Lingo. Good to be here. And Wilbur. Ronnie Jolly, head of the video team. Wilbur. Wilbur, you didn't really used to wear those kind of clothes, did you? Yeah, I wore it. <laughs> Y'all wore some of them things, too. He still, he still tries to wear that hat every once in a while. We finally had to hide it from him. We never wore a hat like that, I can tell you. <laughs> that has it. That has it. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> this first hunt you're going to see was with, with Betty Lou Fegley from Pennsylvania. Three times, I think, three years we've taken her. Yeah, Cuz has taken her, I've taken her, Jolly's we've taken her. We've all hunted her. This particular weekend, she and Tom, her husband, came in to Archie Cobb's place at Woodstock. And 
It stormed all night, just terrible weather, and a big front was blowing through. Next morning, we got up and it started to break a little bit. We went into a place where we knew there were turkeys going to spend a couple of hours, and the first set of calls, this turkey just hammered right back. Yeah, he about jumped out of his mouth. Yeah. Oh, he looked like he'd seen a hank when that turkey got away. <laughs> Man, that was, that's a good time to be in the woods, though. You know, everything gets active right after that, and they were right in the middle of it. Betty Lou made just a super move. Mike turned and got her pointed the right way. It was just one of them tricking them teams. You that know, turkey that. topped that hill, though, when he, when he saw the decoys, he just marched right up in the middle of them. It was a good hunt. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I said the third year's the charm. This next hunt takes place on beautiful 10,000 acres near Cleveland, Mississippi, known as the Old Dahomey Plantation. It's now owned by the Nature Conservancy, and Nature Conservancy is an organization of people who look to buy pieces of land that are going to be maybe cut down or whatever to protect them so that the public can enjoy them for years and years to come. This is one beautiful piece of land, too. It's just a pristine hardwood bottom and right back in the middle of the Delta yeah. country of Mississippi. We're here with a big, big part of the Dahomey hunting crew. This is Mark Yarbrough, Jeff Sherwood, and Jimmy Primos. We had a tough time up here, too. We had a great hunt, though. Jeff and I, we had to dig deep on this old bird. Yeah, y'all did, yeah. didn't we? We had to use that slate glass master. Jolly's done a lot of calling This is brand that. new. This will be out in 93. This is yep. a great call. 
And we also use the new latex true double LTD. I, I love that car. That's Jolly's favorite car. Y'all did a bunch of stuff to trick them, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we sure did. Tough. We even tried roasting them, but I tell you what, roasted ain't roasted up there, boy. <laughs> well, Y'all roasted some of these Oh, stuff? yeah, man. Well, they gobbling on the oh, man. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> They were getting after it, oh, weren't they? Oh, man. I tell oh, you what, <laughs> I found out why those turkeys were so hard, Will. Jolly had gotten there a few days before everybody else, and everywhere we went, his tracks were already in the road. Coming <laughs> and going. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a great hunt.
enjoyed that. Y'all, this is this is Jeff Sherwood. He and Mark Yarborough put us on these turkeys with guests of Nature Conservancy at the homey plantation, Mr. Rob Roy Fisher and Pat Patterson. Got a beautiful place here, man. That was a lot of fun. I, the turkeys had us worried for a while. Oh, listen, how many times did this turkey gobble? <laughs> and Cuz is over there going, bah, 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 bah. And, and every time he would, this turkey, yow, yow. Standing in the road hammering. And, you know, I would like for him to come on up. He would have, but he was fixing to get a tree on me. And it, it just, it, you couldn't ask for no better. There's, there's two or three more turkeys around here. reason we kind of talking low. So we're going to get out of here. Maybe Cuz can get there for the day. Thank you, Pat, and Mr. Rob Roy. Thanks for saving a beautiful place like this for folks to enjoy and hunt. It's a great place to hunt. Isn't it, Tyler? Gosh, it's beautiful. Bow hunting turkeys take some special techniques on tricking them, and we, we're here with some fellas today that are very, very experienced with tricking them. Doxy Hayes, Bob Dixon from Mossy Oak, glad y'all could be with us. Glad to be here. And Will Walker, once again, our great bow shooter. It's tough. You know, ever since we got started, Will, I guess it's been four, five, six years now, taping hunts. Uh, we had a lot of trouble until we started fine-tuning the camouflage and learning to tape everything and camouflage the cameraman better. And it seems like every year we bring either camouflage or calls to a new level and learning new ways to trick them. That's and right. you look across the porch here now and see that everybody's learning to mix and match their patterns to better match, you know, where they're going to hunt. And, you know, little little differences like that every year keep making us better hunters. Yeah, I love the full foliage on top and the bottom and on the bottom. Especially later in the year. But you look across the porch, you can see everybody's got their favorite combination on here today. Uh, you know, it just shows you that if you think about your hunts, you can learn to be better every year no matter how good you get. But these hunts are a great example of how fine-tuning the camouflage can make you a lot more effective in trying to bow hunt turkeys. Yeah. Well, you know, Will, it, it finally happened this year. Yeah. They figured out I could run the camera. Yeah. I avoided it all these years. Yeah, you really ran into a lot, Dixon. I did. My we, we appreciate still, your contribution. I can't even stand up straight without it anymore. <laughs> but it was amazing to me to be sitting back and, and, and filming the hunt and to see how critical it is that everything is camouflaged. We have the tripods, the cameras, the bows, the arrows, the guns, the head nets, the masks, the whole difference. nine yards, it makes a huge difference. And, uh, you know, on both these hunts, you'll see that when you're bow hunting, the turkey is going to be right in there with you. That's right. Walker, what can we say about bow hunting? What are some really important parts of it? Well, one of the key things is, is getting another caller there with you. If it's possible, if you can get a friend to go with you, or we have the benefit of, of taping hunts, and the, and the cameraman can also call. And that takes the attention of, of the turkey away from, from the hunter and puts it back away yeah, from you. And, and on this first hunt we're going to see, both Bob and Toxie were with you. Right, and they were both doing some kind of calling, I'll tell you. But uh, Too much and too loud. It worked, exactly. though. <laughs> uh, another thing is just knowing when to draw, you know, and that just kind of comes with experience, but, you know, wait until they're strutting or, or go behind a tree or something like that, but uh, wait until the turkey's head's concealed, try to get a good draw yeah, on. And I guess that's important for the way you hunt, but it works extremely well because all you're doing is sitting in front of a tree. You're not using a blind or anything. Exactly. It, it gives you some more freedom, you know, and it's just a lot more fun to try to trick them that way. Yeah, all right.
Unbelievable. What a hunt. Man, what an awesome turkey. Has that dude got a rope? He has got a rope rope. What did Will Reed say? A long beard. Oh, what I don't a, know where you hit him, but you hit him right. One morning. He was going to have you ever had one just me. die, you know, or not get away at all like that? Most of them are If you up. hit him like he, hit, he was hitting the backbone, he couldn't go anywhere. If you hit him right square in the Unbelievable. backbone. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Fun hunt, wasn't it? Man, that was textbook. <laughs> That's your your first trip out of the block video in turkeys and you got a boat kill. I'll tell That's you awesome. what. We're hunting here at uh, Bill Brooks Pikes Peak Ranch. Uh, great place to hunt down here in San Angelo, Texas. Uh, Bill's our host and he sent us over here and told us these birds were here and we got in here this afternoon. It was 94 degrees and it we sat, got here about five and sat around, didn't hear anything. And finally, Rob said, I'm going up this tree and look. <laughs> so we sat up the tree for about 15 minutes and finally heard these turkeys gobble. Heck, it's probably been 30 minutes ago, about 7.30. <laughs> and they came up and you saw the rest. But Now we're on our way to Texas near Carrizo Springs, then to Bent Creek Lodge in Alabama. But before we go there, I got a special guest with us, Mr. Mike Morton. 
Glad you're here. Glad to be here, Will. Mike's joined the Primo's team, and we've got some great trickinum products that Mike's helped us come <laughs> up with. We're going to show you all in this. It, in South Texas, we were hunting with Dr. John Taylor, our old veterinary friend down there, and he put us right in the middle of turkeys again. And we went back to Bent Creek with Mark Drury, the world voice champion and current world champion. There you go. And uh, Dr. Jim Casada with turkey and turkey hunting and we had a heck of a time these were two tough turkeys they'd been hunting hard you know for a day or two i know because we'd been hunting them and we had to pull some tricks on them well you know bag of tricks is locating turkeys uh when we've tried several different calls one's a super coyote howler that uh, we developed this year it was that new thing works all over the country oh it, it works anywhere during all during the day i mean any time and, uh, let's hear that thing Mike. it's loud it's got a good sound to it Yeah, that means great. It's definitely loud. Now, Jimmy uh, has another locator call. Uh, Jimmy, won't you show and demonstrate that? Right, Mike. This is our new hawk call. I love this thing. It's a great way to locate gobblers later on in the day. Super loud. It is definitely loud. You get them. Sounds great. Well, Will, you and Jolly use several of these calls on oh, lunch. everywhere. But in Ohio, we had a whole lot of fun with 10 jakes at one time. We blew the coyote super howler and the hawk call and the tube call <laughs> and everything. More they just all 10 gobbling at one time. Well, we have another call that uh, is a fighting gobbler. What we're calling a fighting gobbler makes really two different sounds in one call. And you use it with one hand. And uh, it's, it's very unique. Uh, you, it will do a yelp, reproduce the yelp, uh, the purr, and as loud as you want or soft as you want, and also the, the, the fighting uh, purr. With one hand. With one hand. That's great. You know, it never hurts to carry as many tricks as you possibly can with you through the woods because bottom line you first got to find a turkey to mm -hmm. hunt him. That's and right. And one call might not work sometimes, the other may work. That's right. Different times of day, different locator right. calls work. But bottom line, y'all would have never been able to hunt these two turkeys if you wouldn't have been able to find them.
Yeah. Fine calling, Ronnie. Man, did he do some drumming. Oh, I, I don't know if I've ever heard any louder drumming. It was oh, just, my uh, goodness. It was... Yeah, and steady. You talked just about steady. exciting. It was awful. <laughs> my heart was beating about as loud as he was drumming. <laughs> <laughs> Man, look at that. Well, May finally got here, and we got to go chase some Miriam turkeys. Jolly <laughs> and I were out in New Mexico doing our best, and these fellows were under route Mount Rushmore, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Pretty place out there, I can you see. You know, it's a great country out there. We were in the Black Hills, and a great guy out there. Work Work Bell. Oh, he's a great guy. And But we ended up uh, not having any luck a couple of places we tried early with him, so we just struck out in the middle of a public area. And, you know, we're cutting and running, and we would move to a different area and call, and we weren't getting any gobbling response whatsoever. And so finally, we've heard some hens yelping and answering us just way off, real faint, and we decided to try that as opposed to just keeping on looking for a hot turkey turned out to work out well for us because what we ended up doing is calling the hens and a gobbler away from uh, the boss gobbler and it made him a lot more vulnerable. We killed that turkey and of course the other turkey just started raising. So Cuz got the hunt. Yes, <laughs> that's well, right. What, what happened was when we sat down and talked to us doing most of the calling the hen was answering him real good. He always does most of the calling. No, he don't. Not when I <laughs> and uh, I thought that hen sounded just like a true double, so I changed to a true double, and, and she came running in. All of them did, sure did. and the gobble was right behind, and, and Toxie got that, that first guy. He, he got him, and then, uh, we heard another turkey over there, so Toxie took the camera and let me have the yeah. shotgun. As far as tricking them goes, exactly why turkeys respond one day to one type of yelp over another, I don't know, but know. for some reason, you matched up the sound of that turkey. That's what they were familiar with, yes. and that's what they wanted to hear. They, 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 maybe they that's thought right. they knew who that turkey was. The key was. to that was that he did that and called the hens. Yeah. That made the whole hunt happen. I had to let the second turkey over by himself, oh, and he was Toxie and I had about 20 minutes of a lot of fun. Tricking them in the Black Hills.
long if you kill him. South Dakota. You live up it's in Pierce, South Dakota. Pierce, South Dakota. And we're uh, right, right in the middle of the Black Hills, aren't we? Yeah, right now, right in the middle of Black Hills. Public country. First, first, first morning. Ten miles. I bet we're not uh, ten miles from Mount Rushmore. That's right. Just right over that hill. Isn't yep. It? And first morning out, he puts us on a gaggle. That's right. Oh, wow. Wow. There was more turkeys <laughs> down in here. Toxie uh, shot straight. his on video. And while we were, he was walking back up with his, they kept gobbling. A quarter mile or a little further away down in, and we just topped that ridge. In fact, I got cuz running across there to get You grabbed the camera, and I got the gun. We both got tags. We need to go ahead and tag these turkeys. But we got two, uh, never killed a Miriam. You never have either, hey? No. Uh -uh. That's First time place. I've ever hunted them this morning. Hey, ever. we're fixing to go video you taking one. That's man. right. I'm you ready. earned it. Up close and personal. Hey, thanks. Wow. Great, great right. guy. Hey, it was fun. Yes, sir. Look forward to a lot more of it. Let's tag them.
This next hunt, we join our good friend Jeff D'Agostino and member of the Primo's Pro Staff in Arkansas and then on to Ohio. I'm, I'm really kind of sorry Jeff couldn't be here with us, but then again, I'm kind of <laughs> glad he ain't. <laughs> <laughs> we spent a lot of time with Jeff this year hunting yeah. in two states. Hey, it was a lot of fun. We had a great time hunting We had a Jeff. great time in Ohio and West Virginia, but this particular hunt was in Ohio. These three long beard, big old long beard birds were hanging together and we ran them pretty hard the day before. We sure did. We went into a, we got into a uh, a gaggle of jakes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, ten of them all on top of us, and we had fun with them. Then finally, we found these three big longbeards. Up in the middle of the morning, we hadn't heard a turkey gobble that morning, and by ten o'clock, we got we raised them and went to the edge of the field and got set up. Instead of going off in the bottom, we we felt like they really wanted to come yeah. to the field. That's I, what they'd done two days in a row. I feel like what tricked these turkeys was if we, we would have stayed where we were at the edge of the woods and tried to call them up, they'd never come. So instead, we backed up around a corner of the woods into the field, and sure enough, they came right out of that bottom and straight to it. They sure did. And then <laughs> Jeff and I made a double, and boy, <laughs> was it, it was great. It was wild. Two big old heavy Ohio turkeys. A lot of fun. Keyson in Arkansas, Jeff set Keith right between his legs and he took the wing and we had a good setup. We Jeff uh David Carden took us into this area and this turkey gobbled and we got set up and it didn't hurt having old David sitting thirty yards behind us helping with calling. Well how does it have uh feel have your son on video and filming that hunt? <laughs> what was the first thing you saw? That white head. <laughs> that big old white head. <laughs> Did you get excited? I felt like I had an asthma attack. <laughs> <laughs> And I uh, think Jolly was about to I try. I did have one. I shot at the same time. I shot at Jill. I shot at the same time, partner. <laughs> mm, this is great. Y'all were here in Miggs County, Ohio, with Jeff D'Agostino, who's uh, part of the Primo's Pro Staff. Jeff, put us on them. Finally. It's the second day of the season. Where are we, Jeff? What, what kind of place is this? Actually, Will, this is a uh, an old 
Ohio strip job, the Ohio Department of Natural Resources came in and reclaimed it. So this is coal mining, strip coal mining. That's exactly right. They've come in at their own expense, reseeded it, reclaimed it, put some nest boxes up like you saw for the bluebirds, and I believe you'll agree that there's a little bit of wildlife hey, around here. deer everywhere. I'm Did y'all see what? any turkeys yesterday? Yes. <laughs> Well, he was behind that tree, and, but he walk, started walk out to the other side of the tree, and then he, he said, squeeze t trigger. What's the first thing you saw? That white head. Was Mr. Jeff as nervous as you? I doubt Yeah, because he was talking to you and pushing the button. And <laughs> <laughs> that's because I wanted you to hear what was going on, Ronnie. Sit down, that's that good. Get in there, Dave. Look at that thing. Mr. Longbeard. That's about as dead as I ever seen one kill. Zoom in on these spurs, Ronnie. Yeah. Isn't that something? Will that work? That is wow. Isn't that something? Along with changing methods of hunting today's turkeys, we as hunters need to make some changes as well. Hunter safety is something we hear just about every day. So much so that many of us take it for granted, thinking nothing bad will ever happen to me. And that's a mistake. Safety does not come naturally. It's something we've got to work at. Here's some tips we all should know and practice each season. Avoid the colors red, white, and blue. These colors are most often associated with the gobbler's head. Be sure to positively identify your target. Respect other hunters. If you hear a gobbler and move in to set up and another hunter is already there, back out and respect his area. 
he was there first. If you were set up calling to a gobbler and another hunter comes onto the scene, you should let him or her know that you're there. Do this by speaking in a normal voice. Hey, I'm over here. Never yell or wave at another hunter. Do not put pressure on yourself or other hunters. Undue pressure makes people do strange things. It's the hunt and not the kill that makes spring gobbler hunting. Do not move or walk while calling. We all like to cut and run or prospect for gobblers. But you should stop and check the area before calling. It only takes a few seconds to look around and make sure that all is well. We hope you enjoyed the Truth Five and learned some new tricks along the way. All of us at Primo's hope that your springs are full of great memories and safe hunts. Keith, let's go trick them. All right.